Boy, this question has a lot of text, doesn't it? It is a divisibility question, and I can tell that thanks to two clues. One, there's an integer constraint because the number of students and the number of classrooms, each of those has to be an integer. And the second hint is that we are supposed to be assigning the same number of students, the same number of students to each classroom. That's a classic divisibility problem. Now, we know something about the number of classrooms, right? It's somewhere between 4 and 12. And we also know that there are more than that number of students. They're telling us that n is greater than m, so that this problem is not the kind of problem where we have to consider, oh, what if there's just one student in each classroom? What if there are no students at all? And yeah, each classroom gets assigned the same number of students, zero. No, that's not what they're doing here. Now, I don't think there's much more left to do at the question stem level. I think we're just going to have to go in to the statements and start evaluating each of them on its own. So statement one says, hey, if you had three times as many students, you would be able to assign them evenly with the same number of students in each classroom. So we're supposed to look at that and say, well, OK, so we know that if we had three times as many students, it would all work out. But we wanted to know whether with the actual number of students, it's going to work out. And our job is to try to prove insufficiency, right? To imagine a case in which it would work out and another case in which it wouldn't. But I don't want to test cases because then I'm not really learning anything from this question. I'm not really advancing my quantitative reasoning. So instead, let's stay at the abstract level and maybe imagine some prime boxes as well and see how that helps us to think through this situation. What do we know about the prime box? of 3n? Well, it's definitely going to have a 3 in it, because n is some integer, and I still have a factor of 3 there. So the prime box of 3n has a 3, and it also has whatever n has. I don't know what the prime box of n looks like, but if I want to draw it on my paper, I might have n with its own prime box embedded within 3n. Now, we know that 3n is divisible by m. We want to know what happens without that extra factor of 3. We want to know about n. In other words, we need to ask ourselves, was that extra 3, that extra factor of 3 that statement 1 is describing to us, was that necessary? Is that the reason that 3n is divisible by m, or would n have been divisible by m without that extra factor of 3? So now I'm wondering, OK, what circumstances would make it such that the 3, that extra factor of 3, is necessary? That that 3 is the whole reason why 3n is divisible by m, and without that extra factor of 3, we lose that divisibility? Well, we'd have to look at the number of classrooms. If the prime box of m has a 3 in it, and the prime box of n by itself didn't have a 3 in it, well, then giving it that extra factor of 3 is going to possibly be a game changer. Is it possible that the prime box of m has a 3 in it? Well, looking back to what we know about m, right, it has to be between 4 and 12. Yeah, if m is 6, 9, or 12, it's going to have a 3 in it. In fact, if m is 9, it's going to have two 3s in it. So is it possible that there could be a scenario in which 3n is divisible by m, but when you take away that extra factor of 3, it's no longer divisible by m? Yes, of course it's possible. So statement one is not sufficient on its own, and we can eliminate the answer choices that claim that it is. So A and D are gone, and we're down to B, C, or E. Now statement two seems really similar to statement one. The only difference is that now instead of an extra factor of three, we have an extra factor of 13. So we have to repeat that same thought process, but this time with the extra factor of 13. Now remember, we know that M is between 4 and 12. Is it possible, given that m has to be one of those numbers within the range of 4 to 12, is it possible 
that this extra factor of 13 is the reason that 13n is divisible by m, and when you take away that extra factor of 13, you lose the divisibility? And the answer is no, it is not possible. Why? Because I know that m doesn't have a factor of 13 in it. How do I know that? Because m is one of the numbers between 4 and 12. So since that extra factor of 13 is not the reason that 13n is divisible by m, n on its own without the extra factor of 13 must also be divisible by m. And therefore, statement 2 is sufficient on its own, and the correct answer is b. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.